All right. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? James, we got James here. We have, we have of course, Cherie Lowry, one of the top real estate coaches in the, in the world, I would say, right? What started the MAPS coaching for Keller Williams? I and helped I, to start it. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm really, really excited to, to be talking with, with Cherie. Cherie um, has been working with myself and James doing some consulting with us, and we talk very often. James, one of my really, really good friends, and, um, and thought, you know, since Cherie's given us all this great advice, why don't we ask Sheree to come on Real Closers in front of 70,000 real estate agents and talk about being unstoppable and how we can all get through this. And, you know, it was really interesting before we got on, Sheree was like, uh, you know, let's do it. But I think people have some fatigue right now with all the video everywhere I go, there's like Facebook lives, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I think, it, and I think it's a really good point. Um, but I think what we're going to talk about here today will be something unique and incredibly valuable. And so I just couldn't be more, more happy to welcome Cherie on to Real Closers today. Thanks for joining us, Cherie. Thanks so much for letting me join you. Yeah, I just wanted to add to like, one of the things I'm excited about <clears throat> is Cherie's taking bus uh, business and coaching concepts and really turned them into real models, like a real structure, something that you can digest and understand. They're concepts that have, have been written and, and designed in her books. And it's not just um, concept or philosophies or distinctions or belief systems, but they're real life strategies that she uses to help her clients. And so when I saw that Kevin was doing this, I was like, oh, let me hop on and, and see if I can um, ask some good questions with her. Cause I'm always trying to learn from Cherie. Yeah, absolutely. And of course um, we had some trouble with video, so we don't get to see Cherie's lovely face today, but we get to hear and, and that's just as good. So Cherie, tell us, I mean, what do you think right now with everything that's happening? Um, you know, you talk with some of the most successful people in real estate and you've coached thousands of professionals, including some very, very high, you know, highly successful people. Um, what do you think we should be focusing on right now as real estate people? Well, you know what? I think we're sitting in front of a very challenging, high stakes, and I'm going to equate it to a video game. And there's two things I think you have to be focused on. One is bringing your A game. And number two, you have to think at a different level because we have to beat a medical pandemic, protect the planet, all man's global conscious and none of the things that we've done before work <laughs> so it's just a different ball game mm -hmm. yeah so with that said i mean you know we, we talk a lot about mindset and maintaining you know a positive outlook um you know you've you're an author and again talking with lots of different successful people um how do we do that right now? I mean, I'm, I'm worried about shaking hands with people. Like I'm hearing, you know, so how do we, how do we maintain that positive mindset while um, trying to conduct business? You know, I, I'm so glad you asked that because to me, that's probably the most important thing right now or the, or the thing I get to go most deeply with people on to develop. And by the way, I think there's a great opportunity in doing this. Because I don't know about you, I prefer to design my life. And so if you have what I call a Jedi mindset, then you're ready to design your life all the time. So in a Jedi mindset, and excuse me, my son loved Star Wars, and so I'm still into the Jedi mindset. <laughs> it has to be based on your purpose, your priorities, and your values. And you've got to live by truths. For example, there's always a solution to any opportunity. There's always a solution. And the solution brings no limits and opportunities. Hmm. Awesome. So no is, limits and opportunities. Okay? Mm -hmm. What does um, being unstoppable mean to you? And I know that you have a concept called the up zone. Maybe you can explain to us 
a little bit about what it means to be unstoppable, being an up zone, being an enlightened leader. Where does that all come from? Well, you know what? And that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say a Jedi mindset, because you have to have a mindset that you can stay in. So you've got to have your truths in there. And that's, and these truths, like the ones I'm just saying to you, there's always a solution. There's no limits to what we can create. And you choose to change. You know, you can either resist change or you choose to change. So you have to stay in that mindset to face today's challenges. And underneath that mindset, and you can have more truths than that, I gave you four. Underneath that, you have to have a personal power grid. Did you guys ever play the video games where you, it, it was a driving game and you ran over a personal, like a, a power grid? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think so. I used to play OutRun, <laughs> I played OutRun, remember OutRun? You might even be too young for OutRun. You have like a time limit, and then yeah. you you hit the time limit, and then you get well, you hit a you, you hit a checkpoint, and then you get more time. I kind of feel like that with business. But anyway, exactly. So in this video game, you ran over a power grid to play to continue on the journey. Well, you have to have your own personal power grid. And a lot of people like you, James, and you, Kevin, don't necessarily develop those power grids because you'll just keep going and hit the wall and do all kinds of stuff and make it happen. And you get away with that because you're talented. However, in these times and to stay in that mindset, you have to figure out what keeps you centered or balanced. So example, you, one of the ways I can snap back into that personal power is just to walk outside and be in, out, out in nature. All I have to do is walk out on my deck. I'll, I'll send you a picture of my backyard. It's just beautiful. And it brings me back. But you have to figure out what the solutions are or what you need to stay in that Jedi mindset. And that's what I'm spending a lot of time with people on in order for them to make great decisions for their businesses. So mm -hmm. like, I think you and I were talking about one that you're doing with your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I have my son, he's six years old. And since we're at home, um, I just, I have him hang out with me. He's not in here right now, but I just have him hang out with me when I'm, when I'm working and he does, uh, he's doing school. He's, he's, his schoolwork is happening from home. And so he does his homework and his work here and he gets to hang out with me and I actually get to hang out with him. And, uh, you know, just, he, he just kind of learning about how I act, how I respond, how do I, you know, interact with other people and some of the things and my responses to things. And, um, it's a, just, a, it's been really nice. I mean, those are, these are going to be some, you know, things that we'll always remember. And, uh, and it's just nice to be able to have the, those, those experiences. So well, I love you also run too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't run anymore outside as much, but, um, we just do, we do a lot of things together with, with our kids as a family and including like just, there's, there's not in terms of limit, like there's not really, I try not to put any limits on, um, exposure with my kids in terms of being an adult or not being an adult, of course, keeping things like semi-appropriate, but also this, there's, you know, our kids, sometimes I feel like we shelter our kids. We want to protect them, but um, I think it's okay to expose them to uh, just daily life challenges and experiences. And sometimes I might be frustrated on the phone, but it, it, I think it's a good thing for, for a young kid to hear, how I might handle a situation. Um, and, you, and you know, it serves you too, because you're not worried about what he's doing. Um, he's learning from you. You're sharing time with him. There's always that parental guilt, which affects being able to stay in that mindset. James, what do you do to stay in, in your Jedi mindset? Um, <clears throat> gosh, I probably say- You look like a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I would play, I, I, I think 
you know, one of the conversations you and I have a lot is, you know, where do I leverage? Yes. Um, and she, you're always asking me that question in every co conversation. How am I going to leverage? Um, but everything I'm building, how, where, where in it will, will I eventually leverage it? And uh, so because I, I'm, I've gotten to the point where we, we've leveraged a lot of things, I get to spend a lot of time focusing on the thing that I want. And the focus that I want, I'm passionate about it. So I stay in the up zone or I stay in that unstoppable mindset because um, I'm focused on it. So, you know, last week we had a call and, you know, our focusing question was, where's the money? And it was a really fun conversation. We just started talking about like, okay, in this dramatic time, this volatile time, who are the clients that are still investing in their business, still are interested in, in, in creating really great marketing and building their brand? And, can, and, and want to work with us. And as soon as we cl clarified it, I got really excited and you know, started Monday, just really go, so I'm looking for ways to prospect and talk to them. And so staying in the up zone is um, a lot of it has been about focusing and then being able to leverage the rest. But you know, my business partner, he um, wasn't in the ups, he wasn't in the unstoppable being zone. Um, so you know, one of, you have a, a thing called your breakthrough technology, um, which I thought was really neat. I, I tried to work with him on it so that he, he could break through some of the, the more cynical um, perspectives that he was having. Uh, would you mind explaining to, you know, maybe to the, everyone on the group what your breakthrough technology is? What do you mean by that? I found that in working with achievers like you guys and all of the audience, that there has you have to understand how to break through and that when you're in the breakthrough zone there are laws of breakthrough that you have to understand for example one of the laws of breakthrough is you can't do action results it's action 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 results and that's what's happening right now around this pandemic we're going to have to take a lot of action before we have the results. And that's what breakthrough looks like. So that's an example. A lot of people think that you can break through just like you do the rest of life, rest of life, take action, you get a result. That's not the way it works. Also, it's another time zone. I don't think I've put this one in the book yet. It's another time zone. Uh, it's very slow mo. <laughs> And for people who are high D's, you have to go into breakthrough zone with a different mindset because it just doesn't happen as fast. Those I, are two examples. I, I, that works for me too. You know, I, I've noticed we have a lot of, um, for my, in my life, you know, with a lot of clients I want to work with, um, a lot of people have said yes, but nothing has happened because everyone's on a pause. And so rather than just kind of sitting on my, my hand, on my, you know, my, my hands and just waiting for it to wait out, I'm still doing and prospecting as much as I can, just like normal, knowing that it's, there's going to be a windfall when um, this pandemic, pandemic ends. And so that to me is like that action, 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 and knowing that there's not going to be a result for a couple more months, but still being in action. And then eventually there will be a windfall of results. Um, but Cherie, you talk about how it, part of your breakthrough technology is, you know, there's this assimilation that happens, uh, right? And then there's, yes. uh, you know, part of breaking through is downloading new systems, new mindsets, new support, and new structure systems that would elevate a entrepreneur into more of a, a leader. And, and so maybe you can share with us some, some of that and also how you define the difference between an entrepreneur and a leader or maybe like someone who thinks like a CEO. Okay, well, let's take that first one. Um, so as people go through a breakthrough, because they're learning so much new, here's what I noticed when I was coaching people. You'd ask them a question, like I worked with this young lady who reported to me way back in my career and uh, she said, we, we serviced Atlanta, and part of Atlanta includes an um, uh, amusement park here. And she said, I can't go to Six Flags. And, I'm, 
And I said, I, I just couldn't, it didn't compute <laughs> because it's part of Atlanta. And so her breakthrough was to tell me she didn't want that job. She didn't want to travel Atlanta. So when people go through breakthrough, a lot of times they're processing so much information or information that is not in alignment with what they want that their answers just don't make sense. So it's almost like they go totally blank. It's like a somersault on the way down, you go totally blank and you assimilate new information. And on the way up, you have your old information plus the new information and you progress. But when you ask people questions when they're on the way, <laughs> on the way down, you get some very interesting answers. Mm. You were talking. That don't make sense. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And you know, just dealing with with so many people, there's you've got to you know you're exposed to lots of different ways of doing things. But I think what it comes down to, and we've talked about this, it really comes down to to habits, right? Actions, habits, um, pretty much interchangeable. The word. And, uh, and a lot of times with, with taking certain actions or when we have these certain habits, we don't always see the result right away. And that's the frustrating part. It could be sometimes, right? Like I'm putting in all this effort. Yes. That's really right now what's happening. A lot of us are putting in effort and it's, it's a constant thing with us in real estate because we put in, we're basically, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, however you want to say it, but it's like, you're not getting paid per hour per se, right? You're putting in action as a, as a business owner and entrepreneur, you're putting in effort over, over a course of time. And then to, and, and then the expectation is to get results. But right now, like the effort that we're putting in, it might take even longer potentially depending on where we are and with everything that's going on. And it can, it can get frustrating. Like it can, when, when you're putting in those daily habits and those actions every single day and then not getting the result, um, and I mean, it's just a matter of, it's a matter of discipline, right? It's a matter of discipline and it's a matter of belief in yourself, belief in the system and in the process and uh, knowing that results will come if you put the effort in every day and be consistent. And uh, it just takes, it takes a lot of stamina. Wouldn't you agree, Sheree? Like it takes like mental stamina to put that effort in every day. And I think right now, tell me how you feel. I think right now, probably more than ever, just with everything that's going on, forget about business, outside of business too. Like we're all making these major adjustments in our lives. Like we're working from home or we're with our families. I mean, there's good and bad, right? Yes. And, uh, it's just an interesting time. And um, what do you think about that? Like, how do you think we're gonna handle, like how do you think people are gonna handle it? I mean, just overall. Well, here, yeah. Here's how I'd like for them to handle it. Okay. I think if you are on purpose with a plan, in other words, you've got a dream and you're following that dream and you have a game plan, then you can keep moving. And to me, how I do it is, okay, what is my next step on this plan and how I do it with my clients? And we, you know, so we check off the step. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you may not have a result yet, but we've checked off a step and we've thought out the step and the plan and it's an alignment. This is, this is what makes it easier when it's in alignment with who you are, your values, your perspectives, et cetera, and your purpose, you're going to do it anyway. You're right. going to do it anyway. As long as you keep that power grid working the way it should, you're going to do it anyway. For example, that's what James was talking about there, moving on clients that he knew that would move. He just focused a different way. I'm working on a children's book and I, can, I have to do a lot of background work to figure it out. So I can keep moving. You can find things to keep moving and find the money too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of break down in your, um, your model. You have, you have mindset strategy and then you have action strategy. And yes. part of your process is breaking down, okay, exactly what is the mindset we want to have right now? And, and maybe you can help the, everyone watching. What would be your focusing question when you, to help others create a mindset strategy? 
for this. I, I would, and I, I think I would say, okay, we would, we would have worked on what's your purpose, what's your priorities, what's your values. And then I would say, what are the truths you're going to live by? I, I was sharing mine. I believe there's always the solution. I believe that we're going to find new opportunities and there's no limits. Now, this is when I'm in my right mind, okay? <laughs> um, and I also believe that there's probably a better way to do everything. We just need to look at, and I'm going to choose to change. I'm not going to be pulled, kicking and screaming. I choose to change. So, you know, you're armed up, you're ready to go. So when I'm in my right mind or my Jedi mind, that's how you'll find me. And I work to stay there because why wouldn't you want to hit it out of the ballpark all the time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You then leave. But you got to decide what the, your truths are, James. Right. Yeah, because you have a whole life extension kind of purpose um, outline that you help create, where it helped me a lot to bring my personal purpose into my business. And yes. So, and it helps really a lot because when you when you bring your purpose into your business, then you can, it, it kind of drives you to keep running because you know that the business is a reflection of who you are. And well, if you could see my wall on my wall in my office, it says unstoppable. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And that's part, that's part of my purpose is to cause people to be unstoppable. So when you find somebody's purpose, remember Kevin, I was after you to, uh, to define yours as well. Um, it's, it's very hard. Easy. It's it's not easy. Go ahead. It's not no, easy. No, 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 no. It isn't. Uh, sometimes it. Some you have to be ready, but it's the truth is I think it's part of our innate nature. We just have to articulate it. Anyway, once people align with that, discover it. James, I think you would agree with me. You are not. You you can't be stopped. You want to do it. Oh, totally. I started, remember we started out, we started drawing all areas and divisions of our business, of my business, where I could bring my purpose into those divisions. And it yes. Was really neat. And I think like you, you would say, like the, the mindset strategy drives the action strategy because mm -hmm. I think for a lot of um, agents and, and brokers right now, you know, everyone's kind of pausing when they could be in action towards um, maybe it is the first part is reflecting and clarifying their own purpose and, and then just, you know, iterating on their current processes in their business, uh, improving little things in their, in their business. Maybe it's like Kevin and he's killing it on the recruiting game. You know, it, it could be yeah. it's all internal business that they can be working on that leads from your business being a reflection of your mindset and your purpose um, and who you, and you, you know, the gift you want to bring to the world. That's all part of it. Um, and it's also knowing the numbers you want to create, reviewing those numbers, being crystal clear. A lot of times I have the opportunity to work with people and they're not sure what numbers, there's no, there's not clarity about what they want to create. To me, and I'm going to use Gary Keller here, he reviews his goals every day as part of his exercise routine or his get up in the morning routine. He reviews all of his goals every day. He starts his day that way. So that to me is his mindset strategy. And he keeps, I, I'm sure you've heard the story. He, he's had to do a lot around his diet, et cetera, um, in order to remain in that Jedi mindset. So that's what I mean when I say mindset strategy. I, I love this quote and, it, and I think it relates, it just reminds me as you were talking about strategy and mindset and uh, habits and tactics. Um, I just had to look it up and I think it, 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 it I think it makes sense here. And it, and it's the quote is strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Yes. I think, I think that's powerful. That was in a, that was in a book that I, that I read and I just looked it up, but I think it's very, very important to have, a, have, have the vision, right? I mean, we, we hear a lot of times about what we should be doing every day. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of tactics, right? Like 
should be prospecting, yeah. calling this person, doing this, doing that, right? And then, but then what's the point? Like, where, where do I want to go? It's like, uh, that's sometimes can be very challenging, but it's the driving force when times get tough. See, yeah. I'm all about people being unstoppable. So what I know is if they're dr driving from purpose and they've created a dream, I have a hard time getting them to stop at all. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and it doesn't mean they don't need to take breaks. They just are so committed to what they want to create. And I, I, I will drive for that because that's how you create success. Unstoppable success. You have um, like five levels to your uh, like belief system, like limiting belief system to un unstoppable belief system. We kind of break those down. So we start at like limiting belief systems to awareness of limiting belief systems to creating new beliefs, living new beliefs, and then being unstoppable. You know, do you know, um, do you know what that was for, James, why I created that one? No, but I don't think anyone else knows what we're talking about. So let's first <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about. Okay, in order to go to the next level, you know that there is some limiting belief you have, or you'd be at the next level, right? So the first step is understanding that you have a limiting belief. So once you understand it, you are now aware. So then you create a new belief. Let's use an example like I can't leverage. Okay, now I know I think I can't leverage and you are aware of it. So your new belief is you can leverage, I'm gonna push you on this one, everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You can leverage everything. So the next step is to live that belief. And out of that, you created a lot of systems so you can leverage. And those systems are at the high level that you like to perform because they were help, you helped design them. And so for a while, you're unstoppable until you hit the next limiting belief that will allow you to go to the next level. It's a continuous process. And to me, when you live your life that way, first of all, it's exciting. But that's more of a mastery mode. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm not constantly challenging myself in some way, I kind of get bored. Yeah. So I would rather stay in an engaged way of being than not. Totally. But you, you, have, you have to consciously choose that. Because we as humans resist change. <laughs> I'd rather cause my change than have it happen. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So the whole idea is looking for limiting beliefs and helping others be aware of them, create new beliefs, and then live those new beliefs, which would then alter their actions and then altering their results. Exactly. And, and the, it's circular, that model you just went through, because you can, you can there's always a limiting belief. Or you would have everything and create everything momentarily, <laughs> right? So it's a constant, how am I limiting myself? Mm. And that kind of leads you, that focus and question kind of leads you to whether or not that person is in a state of mastery. Yes. And I, I honestly, because I think that most achievers choose when they change. They choose when they choose and they do it kind of like a turtle when I want to. <laughs> the head comes out, okay, I want to change. But I think it's better to be beyond a growth mode where there's change going on around you and you're in a change environment into a mastery mode where you choose to change consistently because, frankly, it's more exciting. <laughs> Kevin, that's and you yeah uh, yeah i feel like you're an appropriate example of that the way you run your um your company yeah. your brokerage it's like constantly iterating looking at ways to, per to perfect what you're doing um 
And I think we can be spending a lot of our time right now doing that. Well, yeah. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, Sheree and I, like I've a big percentage of my time is spent working on my business far more than working in my business. Um, and it's good. I think, I think it's good to have both. And, uh, I think a lot of us though, like we're kind of forced to work in our business often. And, um, right now is a time for us to potentially spend more working, working on our business. Right. Because we there's, because there's just less, and I don't know, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, maybe it's better to work in our business right now because um, we need to, we need the results. Right. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Is it better to work on your business right now or work in your business? What, what do you, what you, you know, say? I, I would say it depends on what's going on in your business. Right. And I, I would say that you probably want to be out with the troops a little bit more interface with them in some way to support them. Cause it's all about people right now and helping them grow and learn and work through this because we all have to play in this solution. This is a global solution. Mm -hmm. So I think you, and I, I know I keep asking James and I keep asking you, Kevin, what do you need to do for your people? Mm -hmm. What do they need? Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling it. So everybody's got to be feeling it. What do we need to do for them? So I think it's a little, I would say it's pretty split right now. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's pretty split too. I, I would say now I'm, I've am i leaned towards being, working in my business a lot, you know, just being real heavy, heavy, heavy prospecting. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's like, cause you usually work on your business, right? James, yeah, like you're, you're more, and so like, maybe, maybe it's like, and I feel the same way. Like I'm kind of, I have like a breath of a little bit of like fresh air because I get to work in my business right now, you yeah. know, for the first time I can really focus on it. So maybe, maybe the answer, and I think you're right too, Sheree, is like, depending on where you're at, where you're at, um, you can make that decision. But um, if you spend a lot of time working on your business and maybe this is the time to work in it and vice versa. But um, yeah. Actually, it leads me to a great question for Sheree. Like right now you have, we've got thousands of, uh, realtors who run their own business versus, and then you've got business owners who've got teams and exec and in like management teams. Um, what do you recommend or what is your model for accountability right now with everyone at home, the world's on pause when you could be in action, but you're at home in your pajamas. What can you, um, what would you recommend to, to really hold yourself accountable and stay in that breakthrough action mode so that when this all ends, you come out on the other side even better. James, I, I think, first of all, we have to teach people to have accountability structures, to create them and own them. In working with a lot of people, I've found, and I, I think this is true for me, you guys tell me what you think. I need a little more accountability when times are like this, because it's unsettling. So, mm -hmm. I would rather own my accountability structure right now and have it a little more um, people supported because I don't like to tell somebody I haven't done anything <laughs> that I would resist that to the nth degree. So yeah. um, I, I think I would want people to own their accountability structure. I'd have them design it. That will be the tell for you of what they need. And if you don't see it happening, then I would lean in and help them create it. You actually just gave me an idea. Um, and Dina, I know Dina's on. Dina and I, we work on the same team. And um, I think I might try something that I've never done before. And that is usually when we do accountability, it's always like from the top. But I know yeah. it's not always the right way because like four disciplines of execution, of course, if anyone hasn't read that book or it's definitely a great book to check out on team building and how to structure your business. But what if we set something up with all of our agents on our team to just hold each other accountable? Like all the, like everyone, like me, you, Dina, you know, like everyone on our team. And we just, everyone holds each other accountable. How many calls we made or who we're talking to and all, and all that, like that could be interesting. And I, I think I've heard about it before. I've never really done it, but that just reminded me and I think I might try it. The key is whoever designs it owns it. That's right. what I've learned as a coach. If I design it for you, then I'm tied to my accountability structure, et cetera. 
and you're not. If you design it and you, and I say to you, Kevin, now can you live by this? And you're willing to do it. And of course, I'm not gonna have you do things that you don't really wanna do. I'm gonna tell you, go do what you need to do that's right for you. But if you design it and you tell me you'll live by it, what do you think my percentages are that you will do it? Pretty high. Yes. I'd rather go that way. Totally. I have the, Cherie, do you remember a long time ago, you had created that nine level accountability support structure? Remind me which one that is, because I've got, that's oh like, yes. That's like the boxes, and then there's like, arrows, yes. and it says like, okay, you've got nine levels of accountability support, and if the first one breaks, you got level two, if that one breaks, you got level three, all the way to the point that you've got four levels, nine levels reaching up to your highest purpose that would hold you to account to doing the things that you said you would do. You know, I think about all the, all the, all the realtors who are stopped door knocking, stopped calling, stopped, you know, doing everything when they should just stay on path and know that it'll take three times the amount of result, uh, action to get the same amount of results because of the times. But one of my favorites is, um, you know, our, uh, my level two is my, is my team, my staff, just like maybe Kevin. Yes. You know, I, I'm very, very fortunate. Our, you know, I've got a team of about 20 people that work for our company and all those guys have not gone. They're all still full time. You know, they're all still counting on, on me and my uh, business partner to make sure that they have work this, throughout this entire process, this, this uh, pandemic. And so for me, they're like a huge accountability, but then there's also, um, you know, I have, you guys heard of the book called Rocket Fuel? Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, yeah. Love that book. I have that uh, with my business partner and, you know, we really hold each other to account. That's, that's actually my level one. I'm just saying like, look, I'm going to work with my partner. We're going to get, we're going to just hammer out and we're going to find ways to grow even when the economy doesn't, it's not really growing. And that's been a big piece because I also, I'm a big fan of Jim Collins, who wrote the book, Good to Great, Great by Choice, um, all those amazing books, the, the whole flywheel concept. But hit, one of his concepts is the 20 mile march, which is rain or, shi rain or shine, you, you march your 20 miles and you hit your goals no matter what. And that's kind of my mindset is like having the discipline to say, look, I don't care if there's a pandemic or not, I'm gonna hit those goals. And even if everything slows down, we have clients that have to pause or not start yet. Um, the mindset is I'm going to hit those goals no matter what. It, it's just like your personal power grid. You have an accountability power grid, whatever it takes for you to hit those goals. And sometimes you do need more, whatever it takes, whoever you have to, like I said, I'm not good at telling I would be, I would have a very hard time telling you, James, that I didn't do something. <laughs> I just, I, I, that's a personal thing for me. If I told you I was going to do it and I didn't do it, it just wouldn't work for me. So I like to involve people if I really want to be accountable. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Sheree, this has been really, really great. And, and, and so generous of you to take up your time to spend with us sharing these amazing, wonderful insights. Um, and I don't know, you know, if, if you'd be open to doing this, but like if, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, is there, um, something that they can do if they wanted to learn more about what it is that you have to offer. Of course, being one of the founders of Maps Coaching with Keller Williams, everybody knows about Maps, one of the best coaching platforms and models out there. And you're one of the founders and you are a coach. And um, so if anyone was interested to in talking with you, is that something that they could do? Yes. Um, I'm really quick on my email or text. Um, Kevin, how do, how do we want to give that out? I'll just, um, I'll share it in the, in the comments guys. So if anyone right. wants to reach out to Cherie, um, I'll just, I'll share your email in the comments. Okay. Section. And if you guys are interested, if you, um, well, I'll just share it. You don't have to do anything. I'll share your email, Cherie's email, and then uh, you guys can reach out. But um, this has been great. Really, really appreciate it. I mean, it's always a pleasure talking with you. And um, I think it's, it's super important right now as well with everything that's happening. And it'd be great to have you on again, maybe sometime soon in the future. Thank you so much. And thanks for the opportunity. I don't know about you, both of you. I know this both about both of you that I think we're all committed to helping each other get to where we need to go here. Right. Absolutely. 
Yep. Cool. Thank right. you. Well, thank you so much. Right on, James. Thanks for joining, buddy. Yeah, thanks for letting me hop on. It was fun just to add it in. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for doing it. All right, you guys. Everyone, thank you so much. Have a great day and take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, right, guys.